up high in the sky to the right, you'll see the symbol and landmarks of the Disney MGM Studios, our award-winning earful tower. Stands in at a lucky 13 stories tall and is capped off by a set of Mickey Mouse ears. Just in case you're wondering, on your right is our motor pole. Those vintage autos were used in the movie Dick Tracy, and airports around the country knew this twin-engine turboprop plane is the two, three, four Mickey Mouse. More commonly known around here as a hockey uniform worn by Eldon Ryan Ratliff and D2 the Mighty Ducks. And from television, we have the Golden Girls, along with one of their Emmys, awarded them for Best Comedy Series. And here in Florida, we're very proud to say that with all this production going on, we have the largest working wardrobe in the world, and it keeps growing each and every day. But to make a movie, you not only need costuming, but a few more technical areas. So up next, we have our lighting, sound, and camera departments, where we put together high-tech equipment packages that will later be used on our skiers, but backing into the Sterling Lab set, all that was filmed here on the left. The van you see is only one of three identical prop vans used for the film. The other two are in the parking lot. You'll see two cars. The pink Mercedes is from Straight Talk with Dolly Parton. The red Eldorado is from Gun and Betty Lou's handbag, a made-for-television movie. Now, all these houses have been used in some sort of production, either be commercial, motion picture, or television show, but by Rue McClanahan and Estelle Getty. That's where it looks like they lived for seven years, but that was just the exterior of the house. The interior shots were filmed Dreyfus and Speaking of Dogs. No street would be complete without its very own guard dog, and ours is no exception to you back there. Everybody in the back car, thanks for pushing. You're doing a wonderful job. I really appreciate it. He's a rain sequence because since time is money in the movie making industry, if the scene calls for a rain downpour, they can't wait around for Mother Nature, so they have to create the rain. What for the final scene of this film, the scene does call for a rainstorm, and it's thrown out of high power of rain stops located just overhead, right out of camera range. Water's thrown out. Of Wait a minute. Uh, they don't use this one. Uh, are you sure we're supposed to be in here? They run this one. Okay, I guess there's some special effects that can run this for us. Okay. The rain is thrown out in a circular formation to make it look like real rain. And if you're there, uh, take one. Take two. No, guys. Guys, please. Just hold one back there. Looks like you're going to be in the next Hold on. Well, let's get us out of here. Wait. Take your cut, please. Huh? Let's be in here. Get us out. Everybody in the back up the shuttle, get your cameras ready. I see a great photo opportunity. As they turn the corner, city street party. It runs until park closing. There's games and rides to do. They even have a live band. Take a look through the archway. You'll be able to see how they... Before Christmas. It's a little bit of a three-dimensional animation. 
years now, we found that in certain instances to be more profound as Christmas is false completely in love with it because it's completely high. Inside stages for 230 cents, 227 individual public characters, and a three-year production. Look at the monitors, you'll see it's our computer-controlled cameras. Thank 
Speaking of your appearance, we like uh, Don, can you cut this one? Can you sit for one more? I just want to talk manners for a second. I'll sit up. Thank you very much. Okay. And action! Okay, now grab your hand. Hold on tight. And cut. Did you look at the terror on those faces? Gene Sisko. And I'm Roger Ebert. You know, Gene, those are really pretty impressive.